I think with my clients, I typically always have a conversation with them about how their lifestyle, like, what do you want in terms of lifestyle? So I can really pinpoint where they're headed or where they want to go or what's the next step. Hello, welcome to episode 52 of the Smart Agents Podcast. My name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. In today's episode, we're joined by Montreal-based Jessica DeRee. For Jessica, she is not simply about finding a house for her client. Instead, she focuses on helping them find the lifestyle that best suits their needs. Throughout our conversation, she shares how she has tailored her approach both in person and on social media to market herself as the area's top lifestyle broker. Now, before we get into the day's featured interview, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. You can find the show on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and the list goes on. Also, as you can see if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Click the bell to get notifications when each new episode is uploaded. And lastly, if you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right. So really the way I like to get started with everything is if you can just tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are and where you're at. Perfect. So my name is Jessica Dire. I'm with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Quebec, which is actually a new firm in Montreal. <laughs> um, I'm six years into the business. I do a little bit of both. I do luxury, high-end homes, uh, modest homes, condominiums, mm-hmm. and I basically work suburbs and in surrounding areas. And um, I love fitness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Threw a random so, thing in there. <laughs> right. So when you know six years into it how's everything you know how's everything gone over those six years how's the business pretty good actually (laughs) who would have predicted a pandemic amongst my career but that's uh that's a whole other story i'm sure we'll dive into probably but uh it's very good i mean uh, staying consistent with um all my marketing plans and uh everything that i had put in place really you know watching everything grow all the seeds that you plant grow um has come to you know lead me to this point, basically. Right. And in your marketing, you really, you talk about being a lifestyle broker. It's not just the the home transaction. To Tell me a little bit about that. What's that all about? So how this came about is something that um, I think with my clients, I typically always have a conversation with them about how their lifestyle like, what do you want <laughs> in terms of lifestyle? So I can really pinpoint where they're headed or where they want to go or what's the next step. And I found that I work with a lot of financial planners or people in the banking industry who lead me to cl- clients who are trying to figure out that next step. So it's always about lifestyle. So I figured I'm always in this lifestyle mix. And that's my first question to people. Why not put that into my whole marketing campaign? So lifestyle broker is where it's at. <laughs> right. So with that, you know, it's a lot of, uh, it, what kind of like, so when doing that, do you have like a checklist of questions that you really kind of, to really get to know these people so that you're putting them on the right path, you know, to finding the home? I do have a checklist. Um, I don't always go through it one by one because every scenario is different right. for each person. And some questions are, are a little bit touchy. You kind of have to gauge and be a chameleon in every situation. So I kind of just gauge, you know, before, if it's a referral from somebody, kind of what they're expecting to hear from me and whatnot. But going in there, it's always like, what is your lifestyle now? Do you want to keep it? Is is there a change? What is happening? And usually, you know, people are very transparent and honest with me. So um, I get to make up a game plan for them. Right. And you said working mainly in the suburbs, do you get a lot of people that are moving out of the city that are looking for more of like a family home type situation? Yes. There's especially now with COVID, a lot of people that were in condominiums, you know, people would think, Oh, I could live in 500 square feet. Well, not so much. So, <laughs> um, some parts even further past some suburban areas have been booming. Um, so, you know, more land, uh, more like larger footprint of home, that's what people are looking for, even cottages. So secondary home market has skyrocketed completely. Um, so something that you typically might have not wanted to purchase before, well, now people are overbidding and <laughs> there's multiples on them. So it's been it's been very different <laughs> than what we're used to. Right. When you, uh, so is this an area, did you grow up in this area or did you move there, you know, kind of later or- on or- 
<laughs> I grew up in this area, born and raised. Um, it was basically, you know, every park that I've been to playing soccer, I know, um, school, high school, stuff like that, little little sneaky places. We also go hang out. I know them right. all. So, um, yeah. Right. So that definitely plays in well with the lifestyle broker because you can tell people exactly, hey, you know, if I have a five-year-old that's starting school, these are, these are the great, these are the schools you want to be close to. And those, you know, I think that's really beneficial. I know when we moved down to Florida, mm -hmm. that was hugely, you know, beneficial to know exactly what neighborhoods we should be looking at for our family. Oh, a hundred percent. And even because I work with a firm and I've previously worked with a firm that's international, we usually get a lot of clients coming from anywhere around the world. Right. So um, when they come and talk to me, they want to know, is it downtown that would fit my lifestyle because it's closer to the office or can I commute and work and live in the suburbs, for instance. So I kind of help them figure that out as well, too. Right. Um, you know, you touched on COVID a little bit and how I'd imagine that plays a, you know, has changed a lot of things with that, you know, you just can't take somebody in their car and drive them around the neighborhood and kind of show them around what, you know, how's that really been? It's uh well, definitely when getting a new car this year, I didn't think <laughs> of having additional <laughs> extra seating because I'm not bringing anyone in my car, but um, it's, it's changed quite a bit. I mean, um, we have restrictions on how we do visits nowadays. Um, you know, we really try to narrow down the selection of what you really want before visiting. But in this hot market with no inventory, I mean, people are just grasping whenever they can. So um, I meet them there. We have our masks, <laughs> we clean our hands and we do the visit. Right. It touching more back on your marketing and how you've marketed yourself as this lifestyle, you know, broker. What are some of the things that you're putting out there to kind of project that? Uh, showcasing basically certain aspects of a home or amenities in a building that I have listed, mm -hmm. stuff that really will captivate people and say, you know what, I want to live by the water or mm -hmm. I want to live, you know, in this condominium because I have all these amenities and services. So it's really showcasing a lifestyle that you could have, right? Or just me doing something around the neighborhood that I'm in. So People say like, where is that? You know, and oh, that's yeah. cool. I know that, you know, I live here. I don't even know that. So it starts a conversation. Right. I think it's really important, you know, looking at, you know, your social media and stuff. It's not just the, the home listings and things like that. It really is that, you know, I'm a member of this community and you can mm -hmm. trust me to, you know, put you in the right path. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. That's basically the, the whole gist of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you also talked about, um, you mentioned the uh, relationships that you have with these financial planners and these different people that you're getting referrals. How did you make those relationships? Because I think those are really important. Yes, uh, that has when I walk. One, sorry, when I walked into the business, the first thing I did was kind of analyze what was missing and what I could do. I knew I was a horrible cold caller. <laughs> And I wasn't going to wear that hat. So I said, you know what? I'm really good with meeting people and I'm good with people face to face. So I said, you know what? Let me network. And through LinkedIn, believe it or not, and other platforms um, such as Instagram and other social media platforms, I was able to link up with a few other people, get to meet them and engage with them. And as soon as you get to trust, you know, one another and have a few transactions under, you know, the belt, uh, they kind of start referring you more business. So that's how it came about. And that's how social media came about too, is at the time, no, there was not a heavy presence of realtors on social media. So I said, this is my chance. <laughs> right. That's interesting. You talk about not liking to do cold calls, but using LinkedIn to reach out to these people. How did those, how did you, uh, you know, kind of break in or break through and have those conversations with these financial planners and things? It's just like, Hey, how are you? <laughs> <What's up? laughs> Uh, do you have a, you know, a real estate agent that you're working with, uh, or I'd love to, to know more about your business or, um, you know, what's, what should I put my money into, you know, starting that conversation really. And then it's like, well, if you ever need, if you're not working with anyone in need of anyone, well, I'm here, I can show you some stuff that I've got. I've got some marketing tools that you can take a look at. And that's really just how it comes about. Awesome. What? I think that's great. You know, I think a lot of people like LinkedIn is one of those ones that everybody kind of has a profile, but they don't really use it. It's just kind of there. You get an email from it every once in a while, but I think if you can harness it and really use it, it can be. Oh, a hundred percent. I think 
now it's more of a platform because they've added additional context to the whole profile. You can actually um, make something really good out of it. So I think people should really utilize LinkedIn um, to its full potential. Great. When it comes to, so, you know, doing the, you said you do the luxury, the condo, you, you said you have a lot of different, you're in a lot of different avenues. How do you, I guess, kind of keep keep track of everything, you know, with, with different, you know, sometimes like the, the condo market might go way up while the housing market, you know, it's just, everything is always kind of fluctuating. Mm-hmm. What's your way of navigating all those changes? I tried to read as much as I can. <laughs> we always get reports and we always have stats and stuff like that. So I always try to keep up to date on those types of scenarios and everything that I'm diving into. If I know, I'm, you know, luxury condo and housing is my thing, we'll go into that, you know? So I always try to keep abreast of what's going on. Right. When, um, along with, you know, back with the dealing with COVID, what was, you know, as things started back, I guess for us, it was like last March, really things kind of blew up here. Um, What was that initial kind of reaction to, okay, what are we going to do? Oh my goodness. So at first uh, we were known as essential workers, but limited to what we could do. And then we were completely non-essential, which understandably so we were in the middle of a pandemic. No one knew what was going on. Right. You were, I mean, we had two months off, (laughs) off of work and you're going, what am I going to do next? So it was completely diving into the unknown. And I just recently spoke to somebody who said, I wasn't going to just let that time pass. It was a great break, but it's also, it was also time to kind of work on my business and see what I could implement. So that's when I started like a book club on a, a book called Ninja Selling, which is about selling for real estate agents. Um, so it's just kind of getting to know what you need to work on or what you want to excel at and basically to teach yourself a new trick, basically. <laughs> right. Well, and with your presence on social media, I imagine that that, that allowed you to stay in front of people that, you know, we're still thinking about buying and selling that when things got lifted a little bit, that you were constantly out there saying, Hey, you know, when it's, it's time, we're ready to go. Exactly. And I think I utilized a lot of tools too, that maybe some people weren't ready to jump on. So, I mean, I made some, I made one of my sellers really get out of their comfort zone. And I said, we need to sell your condo because they needed to buy a house for, you know, their growing family. And I said, you're going to hop on a Zoom <laughs> and a live Zoom and you're going to give me a tour of your condo and I'm going to put it on Facebook and <laughs> super uncomfortable for them. I think I did a run through twice before we actually did it live. I showed them what to open cupboards because I can't physically be present. And uh, we got a lot of hits of, you know, a lot of views, basically, and they actually appreciate that effort. Um, and they thought, what a great idea. You know what? We're in the middle of pandemic. People are, are scrolling. <laughs> Why not showcase our own house? So, um, yeah, it was you have to be in front of people's faces and no better time than that time when everyone was just kind of at a standstill. That's great. I mean, I talked to a lot of people and that's honestly the first time I've heard somebody saying I had my seller do the live walk through. So, yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Thank I'm sure, you. I'm sure that was very uncomfortable for them at first. I know. Uh, oh my goodness. I swear. They just kept saying, Oh, do I do this? Do I do that? How, is my camera? Okay. <laughs> when guys, it's, you know what, at this point, not that anything is good, <laughs> but at, you know, we're, we're trying to get out there. And at this point, as long as we're showcasing what we need to showcase, it'll be brought to the right person's attention. So it was right. great. Right. And I think, you know, now as we kind of move, you know, we fast forward a little bit throughout what the pandemic has shown us with, I mean, we're on a Zoom call now, like we used it in our office all the time, but prior to, you know, like the Zoom call, like you just say, I'm going to do a Zoom and everybody knows what that is now. Like it's, it's just such part of the way of life now to where these, you know, quick little videos and things like that are so much more acceptable than maybe they were even a year and a half ago. You know, it doesn't need to be super produced or, or anything. No, no, exactly. I think that's the fun of it too. It is, you don't have to over-exaggerate certain things sometimes. Mm-hmm. As long as the information's right there, it's, that's, it's good enough sometimes. Right. 
how do you see, how do you see things kind of, you know, uh, adjusting to as things open back up? Do you see that these types of, you know, the zoom meetings and, you know, you don't have to be in person all the time to have that initial, uh, conversation. Do you see things going back to the way it always was, or do you see kind of, um, an adaptation of both? You know what? I think it's going to be an adaptation of both, but I'll be honest. I think a lot of people are zoomed out (laughs) and they want to have that interaction. They want to have that connection. And it's like buying a house. You can't buy a house off a video, even though, you know, help clients do so. But uh, for me, I, they would ask me, would you do it? And I was honest. I said, no, I need to go into a home and I need to feel the home and feel its energy. That's just who I am though. Um, but certain people are like me and some people are not. So I think there's going to be a bit of both. Some people are going to be doing this, you know, still, um, and people are just going to be even more, more interactive because that's just the nature of the business. Like for us, networking is key. You can't always do it on zoom. It's not the same. So I think right. we're going to want to go back to, you know, face-to-face interactions. Right. Well, and also, you know, like, uh, for having that lifestyle, you know, to really be able to key in on the the little things, you know, it's it's that little one-off conversation that you might be having with the the husband talking about, you know, a kid's one of the kids' hobbies or things like that that maybe you you wouldn't have had if you were on a Zoom call when everything is very kind of structured in and that that little conversation can really help you key in on that perfect place for them. Exactly. So, I mean, as many as, as much as this works <laughs> um, in person, sometimes uh, a longer conversation is had than on Zoom. So on Zoom, I feel like everyone's just kind of rushing. It's kind of implemented in their day and they have something else to go to. So face to face, people are really like, I'm dedicating this time. And that's when you get to dive into deeper questions. Right. Before we wrap up, I would love, you know, some of your tips for you know, getting out there on social media and really kind of building up that presence. What do you, you know, when you were first starting out, what were some of the things that you were doing? I think being authentic <laughs> is, is the key thing because people want to work with somebody they know, like, and trust, right? So they want to know who you are, what you like, what you like doing on your spare time. Uh, that's why I threw fitness in the beginning. <laughs> but I think being authentic and uh, being real is what people want to see. And also showcasing what, um, you know, what skills and tips that you have for this industry. I think when I first started, I mean, I noticed there was a lack of presence of real estate on the social media platform, especially Instagram. So I said, you know what, let me just start throwing content out there. And it was just, you know, pictures of stuff I liked (laughs) and a little bit about me and uh, slowly it started growing organically. I'm not one to, you know, people purchase Instagram followers, um, but people will notice that right away. Yeah. So um, don't do that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, you can if you want to, but I think, uh, you know, it's all in the number. It's all in the qual- quality versus the quantity. So, Right. Absolutely. And especially, you know, if you're, it doesn't, it doesn't help to buy, you know, viewers, or followers, whether or not they're robots or somebody halfway across the world, it does you no good to, you know, when you're trying to sell in your local market to do that. Exactly. And I will give a tip, actually. I did one thing once and I hired someone to just kind of engage with other accounts and just try to see if I can get more of a following. I think it lasted about two days. I'm going, I can't give up my baby. This is like not in my control. Um, This is not me. It's not organic. It's just not who I am. And I think I took that back right away. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to engage them. Yes, I might have limited time and I might not answer you right away, but um, I'm still here and it's, I'm engaging. <laughs> and I can. Right. And I think that is important to be, you know, to be very authentic. I think, you know, sometimes people get in that, oh, they have this automated system for me to just kind of put something up and then it'll blast it out to everything. And, you know, it just doesn't come across as really you, you know, if it, you know, instead of that one-off photo, like, Hey, I just saw this great place to eat. Let me take a quick photo and type up a caption for it. Exactly. I think, yes, you could be structured. Like I have an agenda and I write down what kind of posts I would want Mm -hmm. for the week. Um, But it could change. I mean, midweek I'm like, Oh, I'm getting a new listing tomorrow. And it'll be up by, you know, 
Friday, let me switch things up. Or today's a cool day. I had something I wanted to post, you know? So I think just having in mind and um, an agenda, maybe in a structure, uh, but that could also be switched around. I think that's, that'll be beneficial for your business too. And the structure mixed with a little bit of uh, that spontaneity. <laughs> right, right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you. And I appreciate you. <laughs> I want to thank Jessica for joining us today. And I really hope you enjoyed our conversation. So once again, if you think you or somebody else on your team has an awesome story or a tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.